So, good morning, Lana, and uh, welcome to our today's lesson. Our lesson today is going to be adaptations of hydrophytes. And uh, just to remind you what we did last time, we did uh, about zero fights. And zero fights, we say these are plants that grow in dry areas, areas where there is no enough water. So, we said number one, adaptation of zero fight is that uh, there are few, few, uh, few leaves. Then very few stomatas that are located underneath 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 the, the, the leaves found at the bottom of the leaves. You can also say the sunken, sunken stomatas. We also say that uh, these have deep roots, they are deep rooted so that they can look for their available water within that environment. Then we talked about thick cuticle. Thick cuticle is a coating on the leaf that prevents transpiration and evaporation of water that is available in the, in the plant. Then of course we talked about uh, um, being deciduous. Deciduous means it's able to shed, shed leaves during this dry season so that it will not be able to lose a lot of water when the water is not available. Then we talk about, um, of course, others that we discuss the other day. So I us today to look into what we call hydrophytes. And uh, hydrophytes, these are plants that grow. These are plants. Plants that grow. Grow in areas. In areas. With water, with enough water. Enough water. So we say they grow in wet areas wet areas where there is enough water. We can talk about examples of such can be what we call the water hyacinth. Water hyacinth, you know what is found in uh, Lake Victoria, what covers the Lake Victoria is water hyacinth. We can talk about water lily. Water lily, we can talk about the mangrove. The mangrove uh, plants that are found in, uh, in water, we can talk about uh, uh, the peperous reeds, peperous reeds that grow on the shores of uh, a river or a waterfall. So these are examples of uh, hydrophytes. Hydro from the word water. Hydro means water. Remember, in science we talk about hydroelectric power, power that is generated from uh, water. So when we talk about hydrophytes, these are uh, uh, basically plants that are growing in wet, wet areas. So we want to begin to know the adaptations. How are these plants adapted to live in that particular environment? Number one, they have thin cuticle. Thin cuticle. What is a cuticle, Lana? I talked about a, a, thin, a cuticle being a covering on the leaf, on the surface of the leaf. So whereas in, uh, in, 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 uh, in uh, zero phase, the cuticle is thick, in this one, the cuticle is thin. Reason being, what is the importance of the cuticle? Cuticle, presence of cuticle in a leaf is to prevent uh, loss of water through transpiration and evaporation. But these plants now do not need to keep a lot of water in them because the environment is full of water. So what they do, they have thin cuticle to lose, to lose water, to lose water through, through transpiration, transpiration and evaporation. They want to lose water because in the environments that they are growing in, there is availability of water. So they don't need to keep more water for themselves. Number two, an increased, an increased number, number of stomata. You find that uh, while in zerophytes we need a few uh, uh, number of stomata, in these plants, we call hydrophytes, require increased number of, uh, of, of, of uh, stomata. And the stomata are found on, on the surface, they are found on the surface of the leaf, on the leaf, to, to lose, to lose water, it's to lose excess water, actually, excess water through transpiration, 
transpiration and evaporation. So what is happening is that instead of having very few stomata, because they need they don't need the water, excess water, then they, 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 they develop a habit of having so many stomata that are located on the surface, on the, on the surface here. Where else in the zero files they are found sunken. So these are found on top, so that they can only open as much as they can so that to lose excess, excess water. Remember the, 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 the importance of these stomata being on the surface of the leaf is to allow light to shine on them. You know stomata open once light shines on them. So if they are sunken, they will not be able to be uh, reached by the sunlight, but they are supposed to be on top, so that sunlight will reach them and they will be able to open and lose water through transpiration and evaporation. Number three, they are what we call flexible stems. Why do they have flexible stems, Lana? A flexible stem is a stem that can move with, with, with air currents or water currents. So we know that um, at the shores of End River and all that, we have what we call water currents. Water currents, we have air currents, we have waves. All these are going to sway these plants. So to prevent them from breaking, prevents them from breaking. Once there is these air currents, where the, where once these air currents are there, or water currents are there, so that the plant does not break. So it has what you call flexible stems. In the, uh, the shores, in the, in the rivers, we experience a lot of waves, a lot of wind. So this is to enhance or to make it uh, stable so that it is not going to, to, to break under uh, dry. So that's one adaptation. Unlike in uh, zero finds where you find that most of those plants are woody, meaning that they are very strong because of the area they are growing in. Number four, we have large, large flat large flat leaves. We found that in, um, in xerophytes, they are, their leaves are spines. They are modified to be spines. But now in, uh, in hydrophytes, the leaves are large, like that. So that they expose so many stomatas to, to the sun to be able to lose water through transpiration and evaporation. So their surfaces are large. They are not reduced to uh, spines like in uh, cactus and so forth and so on, but their leaves are, are, are large. Look at what I have seen in the Victoria. Their leaves are so big, the water lily and so forth and so on. So to be able to lose, to be able to lose water through transpiration and evaporation. So this service here increases the service area of uh, for water loss. Number five, talk about air sacs. We shall also talk about air sacs when we'll be dealing with with uh, with uh, with plant. I mean uh, animals. And, but, but in this case, we call what we call them uh, the, the, the bladder, the air bladder. The air bladder keeps the sh the fish uh, float on water. So the air sacs in this case keeps these uh, plants afloat to keep to keep the plants afloat on water afloat on water and why what is the importance of it being afloat because at this time this plant will also flower it will, it will, it will remove flowers so those flowers needs to be to be pollinated so if the plants are found inside the water the, the insects or the, 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 the agents of pollination will not be able to see them like the insects. So they are supposed to be floating so that the agents of pollination will be able to see them and pollinate them as well. So the air sacs ensures that uh, the plant remains floating. Then number six, talk about waxy cuticle or the leaves are airy. Talk about leaves with a waxy or airy upper surface. So, what is importance of wax, Lana? If you know, you know what, what wax is. That is made from, uh, is got it from uh, the cobs, the honey cobs. The honey cobs is where you get honey. After getting the honey, you made some, some some wax there. So this wax is oily. It's like oil. 
So the leaves on the upper surface, they have airing or wax surface here, so that any water that is coming to land there does not stand. Once it lands there, it will slide because of the presence of these wax. Wax is just like oil. Try to put some, some water on an oily place where there's oil. The water cannot stand on that particular oil place because the, the oil is slippery. So they are waxy part, a part of the leaf so that any uh, drop of water that is coming there cannot stand. If it, if it stands there, it means that it has closed the stomata. It has, it has covered the stomata and so there is no evaporation of water that is going to happen. And so that means that the plant is not going to lose water. So for these ones, they have a wax cuticle or airy part of the uh, I mean, surface of the, of the leaf. So that any drop of water that lands here can be done away with very fast. Does not stand here. So that to allow evaporation. To allow faster evaporation. Allow faster evaporation and transpiration of water. Prevent the standing of water on this part. That's what the reason why they are waxy, waxy or uh, wax cuticle or air service on the leaf. So that any water standing on, uh, there can be can be cleared as fast as possible so that the stomatas are always open and losing water at the same time. But if the water comes and stands here, it means it's going to close some stomatas and the plant is not going to lose water. So that is the importance of that. Then next one we have um, adapted, they have adapted roots. Their roots are also adapted. Number one, we find that uh, the roots are adapted. Number one, they are adapted in three ways. Number one, we have what we call uh, small, small roots. The small roots, unlike in uh, in zero five, where we find that uh, the roots are, 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 are well extensive and long to be able to capture water. For them, they have small roots, not to absorb not to absorb water. And then, the roots are also adapted in another way, that they are, they, are, they are small to reduce amount of water absorption. Then others may have, uh, may have also adapted oxygen and mineral source absorption. Mineral source absorption. And lastly, you realize that these roots adapted also to balancing the plant on water. Balancing the plant. Plant on water. So the roots of hydrophytes, they should be number seven. The roots of the hydrophytes are adapted in three ways. Number one, they are small, not to absorb any water, to prevent, prevent water absorption. So that they don't absorb any water because they have enough water where they are. Then they are also adapted in a way number three, whereby they can be able to, to absorb oxygen and mineral source. Remember, uh, later, uh, some time back, I told you that uh, aquatic plants get their water from, uh, from the, uh, get their oxygen from water. So the oxygen is dissolved in water. So those roots are adapted in a way that they can be able to, 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 to get oxygen from water and then supply the whole plant. Then number three, they are also adapted in another way, so that they can be able to balance the plant on water. Then lastly, number eight, we talk about um, um, floating flowers. Floating flowers. The flowers of hydrophytes are floating, of course, for pollination. And pollination mainly is done by insects. Can also be done by water, but mainly is done by by small insects. So the reason why they are, the, the, the hydrophytes are floating flowers, of course they float on water, they are floating so that they can be available for pollination by small insects. So we are done Lana with the adaptations of hydrophytes and um, with that I just mentioned a, a few things about the last, um, the last class of plants, what we call the mesophytes. Mesophytes. Now, mesophytes are plants that draw on normal conditions, normal climatic or weather conditions. I can talk about weather conditions. So, those plants that draw on normal conditions, 
We call them mesophytes. Examples are maize. Maize do not require a special type of environment for them to grow. Look at beans. So all those plants that we grow in our area, on even up country or even near around uh, in town, those plants are what we call mesophytes. They require just moderate uh, 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 water, moderate everything, moderate sunlight, moderate everything. So that is the last part. Apart, but we are not going to discuss it because. It's also not discussed, just need to know what mesophytes are. So now that we are done with the, the adaptations of plants to various environments, and next what we are going to discuss is science. Science of an health. Science of an health. Healthy crops. That is going to be our lesson next. We see if, when plants are not healthy, how do they look like? And for example, I'll give you one. They exhibit what we call curled leaves. The leaves are curled, they don't grow normally. So until next time, Lana, I want to wish you well and may God bless you. Thank you.